We request you mute all of you, please. Okay, seems good. Let's understand why attacks are successful. Let's look at, uh, at now in 2018, cyber attacks are affecting our lives like never before. Hackers have already been compromised multinational companies, stealing personal details of millions. Hackers have even been implemented in national elections. But now for the imp impact of cyber attacks will be felt by all. Now the people's mind have already been added as uh, now uh, like not like uh, will I be hacked but it is like when will I be hacked. So let's look at the today's modern landscape. When we look at the today's security industry as a whole and its whole lot of complex landscapes you can know that there are a lot of information technology devices interconnecting together to expand the attack surface for an attackers. Nowadays the attack have been organized. It is being funded and it is being raised by motivational peoples and uh, peoples who really are getting benefited from these activities. The mode of implementations or mode of attacks changes from person to person from uh, attack attack threats to threats or people to people and it stages from each stage another one. At the end of the day all of these results for an economical change. We have been seeing this for the last couple of decades that credit cards are getting leaked. Our accounts are getting compromised. Ac accounts have been no more. Personal information have been leaked. Millions of uh, millions of ransoms have been taken across. Services have been denied. So all of these are being nowadays being very familiar to us because it's happening each day and another. So now let's hear about like what all are the common things that we are hearing. Hope you guys have you guys have seen all of this once in a while at least. So these are some of the common some of them mainly we can say that the some of the common attack vectors that the attackers have been following across. So as per an analysis by the PwC for a survey which is conducted on 2017 to understand about the cyber security incidents which is happening. So we can see that the each year the level have been increasing to a 66 percentage of growth on security incidents. Now it's the, it's been to 4 to 42.8 millions of incidents are getting grown each year from the whole IT vectors. Why actually are attacks getting successful? Let's think about that. You have we have organizations, we have multiple number of people working with us, we have multiple number of sites, lot of complex devices connecting to it. We need to manage hundreds of different technologies. We have a lot of people working with their dependents, business continuities. We uh, the whole end business is running on IT. So why actually the attacks are getting successful? The reason to it is we each department of each person have to handle more than 80 plus tools as an average. So this levels or this level of uh, handling of tools is also getting overwhelmed a person and or a team. We will be seeing about 45 different vendors in each department or each team. So or each company organization across we will be having 99 percent of unpatched vulnerabilities. We have even though we know that this is a vulnerability there is an impact on the attack still we will be if you look around it and you scan around it you will be seeing a lot of uh, like mostly as an average 99 percentage of unpatched vulnerabilities and we handling by a team of 10 plus members. So you can you can think about how actually the reason or what will be the reason for an attack to get successful. A recent review all these gives you a holistic attacks attack vector through which an attack is successful in our life. So all the organizations have all these things which is clear and correct. So everyone have network security endpoints your users your privileged accounts everything. So all these are getting managed at the time being on the team responsibilities the way how it is managed the much the configuration being done on your security because most of them are relying on security products nowadays. So let's take the real time example even the multi billionaire company like Facebook is having an attack on trust. So we can't expect that or we can't we cannot say that we will not be hacked. Now the question is like when will I be hacked 
So this is like real-time examples of uh, the why attacks are successful for you. Moving forward, it will be about the ransomware era, which I would like to invite uh, Mr. Prashant to take the things forward. Oh, yeah, sure. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, I mean, is my screen is visible to you? All? Yes. Okay. Hello, guys. Uh, we will discuss, discuss about the ransomware era, like when it started and where it is moving to. And uh, oh, we, right now we are on peak of the ransomware attacks, which is impacting the whole world. So if we will see like when this ransomware era started, it's beyond our imagination. It started at a time when there was no cryptocurrency, there was no Bitcoin or anything to uh, ask for a ransom. So in 1989, the first uh, ransomware hit the market and that was uh, known as the AIDS Trojan. Actually, its name came as AIDS because it was having a AIDS information introductory disket, which was a survey done to get the information about uh, its uh, uh, patients and all so if you will see the first ransomware note what was uh, published at that time uh, they demanded for 189 dollars on a physical address uh, in panama with a pin code which uh, led to their uh, which led to their uh, uh, arrest and uh, caught, they got caught by police and all so if we'll go deep in this then uh, we can find out like they had hard coded the virus as uh, 90 times boot count means your system will uh, reboot for 90 times then only it will get uh, injected then only it will activate it and uh, start encrypting the files in the c drive so moving forward we will discuss the uh, wanna cry ransomware which is the most uh, popular ransomware nowadays uh, still we can see like uh, in the market it's still hitting so many companies like yesterday only it hit the Boeing company just because of the negligence of the cyber security researchers like they trusted the different vendor security uh, policies and all but they didn't fix the vulnerability with the patch released by Microsoft long back in the 14th March 2017 so WannaCry mainly demanded for $300 to $600 bitcoins and it impacted the SMB vulnerability which got released by the in a ship and uh, leaked out by the shadow brokers and it used the exploit as eternal blue so we can see like if we are ignoring the incidents and we are not handling it properly uh, after one year also we can face the hit of the ransomware and it can impact our business our it can cause our financial loss so uh, incident handling is that's why the, the this is the importance of a proper incident handling phases and plans and all so latest ransomware, if you will discuss, so we got the hit on 23rd of March 2018, which was some, some ransomware in which uh, the city of Atlanta got attacked. The whole government, the government data is on, uh, it got encrypted and uh, attackers had already threatened them like to pay the ransom amount by Wednesday. If they will not going to pay, then they will seize the whole city government data and it will get wiped out. So this is how ransomware ransomware era starts from 1989 and till now it is. So now we will moving forward to ransomware life cycle, like how ransomware comes in our system and how it goes to the end. So if we will discuss the first the first step is infiltration, in which the attacker will always try to find out the weakest link, and it will try to exploit it by uh, by, by identifying the vulnerability. And it becomes zero day because uh, when they will identify the vulnerability or the weakest link, we will be not able to know and even vendors will be not able to release the patch immediately. 
so by this weakest link they will infiltrate infiltrate our security system uh, this can be many attack vectors like uh, they can inject the malicious code payloads by emails or by just downloading the adware and all too many things are there to inject the malicious code so once it got infiltrated then the backdoor installation will done the malware it get installed in backdoor uh, installed in the back end or in your system and opens a backdoor for the attacker so after that the malware will try to communicate with the command and control uh, domains or uh, ip addresses to give access or remote code execution access to the attackers and then it will get executed on your system especially if we will talk about ransomware then it will start encrypting the files and then the persistence it will maintain the it will maintain the <coughs> its uh, presence in the system for a longer time after that it will go to the escalation of privilege like if the it will try to take the privilege to access the network drives and uh, domain admin control and all then it will start doing lateral movement it will start moving from one system to another and uh, nowadays it is also moving to the printers iot's everything connected to the system and then it will go to the exfiltration that means whatever the data your system is having malware will try to give it the access of those data to the outer world to the attacker so this is a full ransomware life cycle so after this uh, suppose we are getting a ransomware incident and we successfully identified like yeah my system is getting attacked or we have a target attack and our system got attacked by a ransomware so we will discuss what not to do if you will see the five things what what we have to always take care mm -hmm. is like uh, we have not to do not to get panic in the, in this situation because if you are getting panic during an incident uh, your ir plan will not get uh, executed properly so just be calm and uh, try to execute the ir plan properly uh, with all the effective steps and take all the re remediation things and all secondly we will discuss uh, uh, we have not to do we have not to shut down the system which got infected because if you are going to shut down the system you can lose the volatile data that contains important forensic information so once the forensic team will come to investigate they will not able to find the proper data how malware got executed and all third thing is socialize you have not to socialize the things what you are detecting it can impact on your brand value uh, it can uh, make other guys panic who are not belonging to security team maybe they will get panic more and the third thing uh, sorry the fourth thing is use of domain admin credential you, you should not ever use domain admin credential as once the people will get the domain ad, uh, once the attacker will get the admin credential from the infected system it can uh, impact you more and the fifth one is uh, any uh, non forensic tool uses why i am telling you to never use any non forensic tool uses is that that it will override the data or override the processes going on in your system when the forensic team will try to get the processes running at that particular time of the infection then those uh, for that time they will get too much data and they they, they can their response time could be increased so this is what we we'll, we have not to do and what we have to do we'll going to discuss in incident handling phases uh, this is like how we are going to handle any incident uh, related to security where, whether some cyber attacks and all so there are five phases of incident handling first we are going to discuss identification in which we have to identify the incident and this can be done through different tools uh, alerting methods uh, like how we are getting alerts um, by mails and user is uh, getting you the identification like yeah, we have got attack then it comes at triage in triage we will follow the verification of the incident by the senior security analysts and all who will verify the severity and priority of the incident uh, then it comes about the investigation we will start investigating the security incident with the details and we will document the whole detail which will help the other teams to take the remediation steps uh, in on a proper time then we will start uh, remediating the things the causes the impact what the incident has made we will try to remediate it and mitigate it uh, within the 
uh, uh, within the perfect timing. Then it comes about post incident. In post incident, we will mainly record the, all the incident uh, steps what we followed till the remediation method and what we are going to prevent us in future. We will try to document everything and implement everything so that we will never get attacked again in future. So after this, uh, uh, I will invite Suras to discuss this incident response team and planning. Yes, yeah, Suraj. Hi, guys. Uh, let's respond on how to manage the response team and planning. For a response plan, we actually need uh, four main pillars. So basically, at any type of incident, our basic or the first level is to have the contact details of the incident handlers and the resource managers. The incident handlers will be the people who will have example the credentials to access all technology devices, who will be the person who is having the most technical or, or a technical most technical knowledge, who will be able to guide you through the process. And the resource manager will be the person who understands who are the right resources available at the particular shift, who are the right resources associated for a particular devices or a team who are the right team to reach for it. So this will be the initial phase of contact information that an incident handling plan should have. Moving forward, we should have the references of data flow diagrams. We should be having the login information, network diagrams and system inventories. So it gives a complete uh, team plan, team engagement from the operations team, from the network team, from the security team. If it is an application, it will be having engagements with the application team. So it will be a complete understanding before proceeding with anything else. You before you go ahead and move ahead, you will have the all the references to understand where it is connected. Is it an air gap network or it is an isolated network? Is it a uh, shared access or what exactly it is and how? Because most of the teams may not have the recent change locks or which is happening internally so it could be reached by the right contact which is the resource manager and the associated team members associated for it then we have we have to report these cases incidents how we report it we should report to the level managers your superior managers on the on the shift or if there is a shift based organization or it is like a flat organization then you should report to your next level managers and then your CISO and then it comes to uh, uh, your, let's say, how actually you are reporting. Actually, how you are to report is you need to report to understand where exactly it happened, what exactly it happening, and what is the type of incident, what is the corrective actions to take, what is the incident impact, how my business is getting impacted, what is the, do I have a backup, do I have a backup procedure to follow, so along with the timelines required. You have to report all these things across. Then at the last, you have the response phases. In the response phases is where you have your engagements with your forensic team. You have your engagements with your blue team exercising. You have your engagements on doing an awareness campaigns to the end users. So this compression, like all these phases gives us a proper incident response plan or it helps help us to maintain or this is the way how we can guide a proper incidence plan as an incident response team what exactly you need for an incident response team you should have a tier one or we call it as l1 l2 l3 and a manager for the same you should have a team of members so it is not a never expect that a organization can maintain their complete security by giving a shared uh, shared activity like a, a windows admin should is uh, responsible for managing the windows security and linux admin should manage the linux security no it's a different phases actually it should be handled in a different phases SOC is security operation centers are been working on bigger bigger organizations in order to maintain their exact work models like say what is their exact work model so they have a specific job description, what they have to do, their level of accesses, how their elevations, how they can escalate their challenges to across. So these all are the backbones to build a proper 
security plan we call it as information incident response plan so let's see what exactly an l1 can help with it so what as a role job responsibility or a role of an l1 you should have a real-time monitoring phase like he should be awareness he should be having a visibility about what is actually happening in a real time he should be known with the recent attacks cyber news reviews he should be a good reading person he should be knowing about the emergency alerts like when some ios have been released when a new threat is released and their ios are released in the market then he should be aware about it before our vendors releases their updates and patches there are organizations still waiting for getting an update or a patch from their vendor when their IOCs has been already been reported by third parties then they sh he should be aware about how to do a vulnerability scanning he should be aware about how to do tracking and uh, reporting uh, reporting incidents he should be aware about how to handle a threat cases he should be aware about giving remote incident response or remote inspections so these are all the law role for a l1 security analyst when it comes to l2 analyst his privilege is also evaluating in the same time his roles also changes he should be a good incident analysis guy he should be like having a complete understanding about the coordination and response on an incident he should be knowing about the artifacts and handling forensic analysis not into a high level but he should be under he should be aware about it completely he should understand to implement malware analysis he should understand the difference on how to do network and application vulnerability assessments he should be aware about doing the like say how to remove false positives and false negatives from assessment reports there are people who still rely on security tools they give the scan they wait for a couple of hours the scan results comes they attach it and send it to the next level managers so this is not the way of how an l2 should be focusing on the l2 l2 should be focused on giving and removing all the false positives which is been updated on that updated on the reports that is generated through a tool give me a second uh, there's a noise Sorry for that. Okay. So he should be aware about the penetration testing phases. It will be helpful in understanding the removing the false positives to evaluate each vulnerabilities which is been reported. So he should have he should be a player in understanding like there is a vulnerability. He should have their own his own demo setup. He should take the machines to there, simulate the same vulnerabilities, simulate an attack on it, like do a pen testing on it, get the impact, attach the impact along with your report and send it to your upper management for review. So threat modeling and configuration reviews and internal audits. He should be supported on all these phases. When moving to an L3, the, as the job elevated, same like the privilege elevated, and same, he should be a more into a situational awareness person. He should be aware about what is the current situation of his network, what is the current situation of his application, what is the current situation of his organization in regards with its risk levels, and how he can look into a security product which has been saying that he will do he will be taking care of the perimeter example there's a perimeter firewall on the level he is assuring that okay i will not get targeted for any other malicious communications so how much he can elevate it how much he can understand from it how he can do uh, multiple pocs to understand multiple products across he should be providing security best practices and fine tunings of existing implemented technologies which is there in the network he should know he should be knowing about creating custom signatures he should be knowing about the little bit of scripting not a little bit a bit more he should be aware about the scripting and automation of tasks he should understand how to collect audits like audits triages like to understand uh, and correlate with reasons of how the logging is happening who can elevate it who is the person who's uh, been accessed on particular machines and the reason behind it so he should be a person to be aware about what type of privileges is being given hold the whole organization in regards with an it terms he should know about a reverse engineering and threat intelligence for sure so 
as the level is like a manager for it he should be the accountable person for all these activities at the end of the day the CISO will not ask L3 or L2 about the incidents it will be a direct question to your SOC manager or your level managers to report to that incident so it is incident at the end of the day the SOC manager or the level managers are not going to be handling or working on the incidents so the reporting metrics that you that the all the three levels which is sharing to the level managers should be very comprehensive should be straight to the point and should be straight to the management table because at the end of the day there is no point in sharing a huge technical document to a level manager it should be comprehensive straight to the point and telling exactly what the incident is all about so this is a complete planning and the way how you have to tackle when you are doing an incident response as a team and as a company Prashant, please unmute. Oh, hello, guys. Uh, we are going to discuss like if you are getting an incident then uh, how we will going to look into that like whether it is a, a malware incident or a just ddos or attack means depending on the attack vectors we have to decide like which type of incident it is so firstly we will look into this like we have multiple types of attacks on our uh, organization whether it can be a ransomware or just a worm or a malicious code or phishing attack or DDoS attack, but mainly we will discuss mainly on the malicious code so that we could uh, look into the ransomware uh, hunting. So first of all, the L1 guy, whoever is working in SOC, will get the alerts for the. He will be the first point of contact for any incident. He can either get through any HIM tool as an alert or by email sent through the users if they are receiving some phishing emails and they have some doubts on the any email they can directly send it to the l1 guys then support desk if any any user of your organization has reported any mail or uh, any incident to the support team support team can directly forward to the l1 SOC. and other tools also like uh, we are getting the direct device alerts also like directly we are getting alerts from the ips from the proxy label also so these all alerts will be get triggered at the l1 stage and uh, once the l1 will capture the data it will start uh, looking into the file name file path file size hash file and file type of the uh, attachment uh, or uh, of the payload so that we could clearly uh, get uh, information regarding the file so which is getting uh, infected in the system so after that it comes to the l2 level which will start uh, doing the analysis part it will start collecting the sandboxing report the host based IOCs like whatever the registry changes uh, and then the network based IOCs like whatever the IP addresses or domains where malware or message code is trying to communicate. So these all things will be taken care of by L2 and L2 will also review like uh, whether we, we are only got targeted at what is the impact label, whether it is uh, how many systems it got distributed. These all things will be taken care by L2, and uh, it will get escalated for the for pure uh, for the further investigation, in which they will start looking into the impact uh, and the distribution of the malware. Like, uh, how, what is the impact? Uh, whether still the malware is getting injected uh, in our system only, one system only, or it has started getting distributed over shared drive or other systems or IOTs. So. 
depending on the scope and impact they will analyze the host like as you said before like uh, they will uh, like never try to shut down the host on which you got the incident because from that host they will start to collect the evidences like which type of communication it is which type of iocs uh, we are getting and uh, they will start preparing a report for a mitigation so while coming to remediation they will start uh, making the remediation actions like uh, they collected the network based iocs and all so they will try to block them on proxy firewall so that the further communication will not happen if any other system is getting uh, getting infected then it will not able to communicate to the uh, command and control also they will start uh, uh, doing the ticking network team in the loop and uh, they will disconnect the infected system they will isolate it from our internal network so that uh, the distribution of the malware, malware or malicious code we can be stopped so after taking the recovery actions we also in recovery actions we will uh, try to reimage the system if it is uh, not getting cleaned by the antivirus as we discussed like if it is getting impacted that means our antivirus was not able to detect it so we can manually enter the signature in the antivirus and we can re-scan the system but just getting the result as clean or uh, no result doesn't mean the system is uh, fully clean we have to check the manual uh, manual uh, intervention also like uh, is there a, uh, is there any uh, still the infection is there or any registry changes is still persisting there so in these cases we have to do manual remediation and or manual removal of uh, the malware and if in case of ransomware it got encrypted then we have to try the decryption by checking on internet sources or our forensic team like is there any decryptor dec decrypting tools they are having for that particular ransomware so at the end the last option is to reimage the machine uh, we have to reimage the machine if all the above uh, recovery actions are getting failed so the, when we are going to reimage we have to make sure the backup what we are use, going to use to restore the system or reimage the system it should be clean suppose the ransomware is already there since uh, five days and we had taken the nightly backup of one day before so again if we reimage the system then also it will be infected only after that we have to update the investigation report and uh, forward it to the SOC manager uh, the investigation report contains will be the whole uh, whole remediation process what we followed from the time incident got uh, uh, discovered uh, in our system till the end like how we reimagined with the, all the percent graphs of uh, how much about the impact uh, how we going to resolve it and how we are going to uh, save ourselves from the any future attacks and uh, also we have to if required we have to make some new siem alerts uh, and we have to add the iocs to the block list of the proxy firewall and uh, also the email gateway should block that those type of malicious patterns so that nothing will come to us through the any attachment of from the email gateway and then we will uh, do the upgrade process in which in upgrade process that means fixing the vulnerabilities what they were have they were having and which got uh, impact which, which impacted the uh, ransomware in our system so these all things after doing we will uh, finish our this malware hunting uh, dear suraj Yeah, sure. Uh, let's start with the uh, last phase, which is the complete SOC automation for incident handling. So when we talk about uh, incident handling or a SOC automation, it will be actually a solution centralized for the security operational activities. It manages and automates and responds to the security alerts and incidents identified by their existing monitoring and detection security solutions it is used to standardize the responses and we will be notified by multiple processes it will help us to mitigate risk it will speed up our resolution resolutions it will help in streamlining communication through a built-in process or a predefined process we will be able to see everything in on a single dashboard or a single pane of dashboard 
and it will be the most beautiful thing will be everything can be visualized we will be able to manage on cases we will be able to work on reports we will be able to see different security metrics required for your organization when we say about the building blocks of orchestration it is a combination it's not like a uh, individual piece or like to audio automate only a one particular activity or something it's a combination it should have the content enrichment like it should be seeing exactly or it should be feeded with the real incident with all the say from your first phase in your sim as uh, mr prashant was telling we should be your sim should be able to correlate an incident your sim should be mapping it with the existing timestamp the sim sim should be matching all the log sources which is which is required or to identify that particular incident and forwarding such a enriched content to this particular solution or the sock automation concept so once this context is been visible it will be easy to analyze to find out the chain of events how exactly the chain will be how the chain have started where the chain is stopped and how the chain is going to build again for this they support things called playbooks playbooks are things which is like a we can call it as our workflow where how actually a incident should be handled in an automation flow so how a plot playbook will be defined will have automated uh, analyst engagement automated uh, automated way of handling it in the same time it will have a manual mode of handling that particular event so playbooks are things we will which we will we'll go through it playbook are things which will draw you a graphical representation of how to handle an incident there should be interactive investigation where the user or the analyst should not have to go depend on 100 tools and log into these solutions to investigate on an incident no he should be having everything in his single pane he, there should be a case management to understand and track the audits of each cases which has been opened as an incident to the organization there should be a collaboration of different departments different team different engagements which they can share and finish or investigate on a case there should be always an intelligence to understand and to give a metrics and the kpis of the people like say the teams who are working on this particular team for this particular soc when we say about how to make it complete the flow of an incident or handling an automated way of incident is through data source then the playbooks comes on the part we have the actions to be taken we have integrated apps and we have to secure our assets when we look at it as the way how we will be able to get an incident through multiple log sources it could be either an snmb trap it could be a different mode of log sources it could be a syslog it should, it could be a uh, uh, polling from a server it could be a curator uh, oh sorry it could be a sim solution which is reporting to us it could be an email which comes to us saying that there is an incident example there is a phishing or there is an attack there is a machine being quarantined so it can be an email so it depends on the way how the data is been handled so the data source from where the attacks comes across then it looks at a playbook which is called as the metrics which will be like the workflow to put each incident in its own tracks there will be actions based on each of these incidents so a malware analysis will be a different playbook whereas a phishing will be a different playbook whereas a privilege escalation will be taken as a different playbooks and it will have its own associated actions to be taken care and all your information security solutions and your it solutions so can be integrated incorporated together to give a better result example of that one is like once any malware once a machine or a host got infected you can quarantine the machine when you have a network access control in place which can be automated when we find out that yes there is a malware is infected in the host and the particular host keeping the host is actually it's trying to do a lateral movement in order to avoid such things we can stop it from spreading it over 
by quarantining it to a separate VLAN or moving to a particular network, which will be doing for the forensic investigation. So these sort of quick way of machine learning and understanding from what it have to do is actually the automation platforms. When we think about the real time incident way of how the SOC works, now, as per the normal way of uh, without an automation perspective, you have different uh, security tools where you will have your SIM solution which detect the network things. Most of your network feeds it collects it correlates and it stores and it gives us the information to a security team or a incident team. The incident team's next response is to investigate on that particular incident and to find out the real cause for it. Once they begin to do it will be a long and tedious process like they should go through multiple solutions They need to pull out the reports. They need to check their timestamps They need to spend closely more hours on top of it Once they get it once they understand with it Then they will have to under go for what is the next action plan They have to do it which will can say as the corrective actions so they have to proceed to their corrective actions by understanding the result and to by looking into the decisions what they are able to take in such an incident once it is been taken care it should be reported as it should be a response to the particular machine so either it should be like a remediation plan which can be like uh, disabling a user isolating the machine or uh, uh, suspend locking the account it could be any reason so it should be responded and once you re respond it should be carefully reported and drafted so once you carefully reporting you will be mentioning about who did what when and how will be report will be shown exclusively in the report to understand exactly the severity about the case how it originates what is the impact everything will be documented and last but least they you will be doing your improvement and your normal activity to for the preventive controls so there will be corrective controls and preventive controls which will be taken care corrective controls will be taken care as soon as you understand that there is an incident and preventive will be the last stage where it should, the same type of pattern of incident and similar should never occur so in this way is the way how a normal incident handling works the benefit of having an orchestrated way or an automation is basically the time saving from automating the incident gathering stage as well as the responding stage and your upgrade stage think about that each of these stages which you need is getting automated and think about the time getting saved on an orchestration platforms or an automation platforms so this concept is being achieved this concept is the what which we need to achieve using an automation mode of handling an incident so it leverages a lot of uh, challenges from the team as you see that the orchestration and the automation can be very very drastic in reducing the time and it increases the precision of the most of the analyst and its activities like the L1 can don't have to spend its or on understanding the cases as much as he do on a normal incident handling mode the L2's investigation phases of logging into 100 solutions and uh, in pulling out all the logs checking the timestamp reviewing it properly then correlating it is been avoided it's been automated only thing will be like say yes there can we can have it as a manual interrogation on it Let's take it as a real time example. So in a real time use case when we have a host which is uh, been infected. So we will be seeing multiple hashes in the network the sim or your security uh, event management solutions will send across all the logs which is from the host that this particular hash is being detected either from your advanced malware solutions or any of your solutions which you have. So once you get a logs and you see that there are similar type of hashes in it what you will understand that yes there can be a malware 
So you will get an information that yes, there is a malware detected on the following number of hosts and you can do the data gathering which will be an automated task like when we say about a manual task. It's like the user have to as, as an uh, L1 or an L2 guy have to go to the, the check the if they how the infection came across they need to review whether there is an endpoint is getting infected and what is the infection levels it is going to spread or is it removing some files or what exactly it is. Then it goes to the investigation phase where we will tell about that. Okay, so I already got infected. What should I do on it? So after this phase, we will have the responding phase like say how should I respond to it? Shall I block it? Shall I do it? Uh, uh, shall I uh, inform the team? Shall I send an emails? Shall I um, uh, add a new firewall rule to the firewalls? So these things if it get automates, then it will be a real life saving for you like the your firewall get automatically blocked the malicious connection is dropped the the end device has been quarantined it it initiates an on demand scan it gives you uh, once it will be checking for the compliance report once the on demand scan is completed and your system your anti malware solution responds to that okay your endpoint is secure then it automatically moves from the quarantine vlan to your secure normal vlan so it automates every processes that a person have to do manually when we say about uh, automates like what we can automate yes you can automate almost all of your solutions in the market which you are currently having most of them have an api to be integrated with that api you can integrate and you can merge together all these things and align it and give a workflow and once you have the integrations the next thing is to make the workflow like who should act first and who should be taking the parameters and moving forward which is called as the playbooks. So playbooks are the things which is we are which we are designing the workflows which we design on handling an incident. So it starts from collecting an incident like say from and collect different sources. It could be a sim. It could be a log source. It could be an email. So once you get it, what are you going to do it? You are going to take out. You are going to find out the IPs, host names. If it is an attachment, you have to send it to your sandbox solution. If it is uh, having the URLs, IPs, you will be sending it to the reputation services. If you are seeing a phishing or any other things, you will be moving it from one phase to another. So these phases is been defined by a concept called playbooks. If you go to the internet, you will be seeing hundreds of playbooks available in the market, which will be help you to guide to draw your own incident response on each of your incident handling like if it is a phishing if it is a malware incident if it is a ransomware incident how you can draw it you can get hundreds of hundreds of playbooks which will be the same workflows on handling it now let's see from a business perspective like how it can help in understanding my business impact yes it can give you a complete visibility and the benefit will be like it increases the efficiency it it gives uh, it shortens up the time required for it and another way is to like it can measure it can track and calculate it can report to end the benefits of each and every tools and their optimum utilization so some of them are called like say we can say it as an return on investment on the automation platforms. So if I am investing on an automation platform, what is my investment? What is my returns? So my returns is basically not like you are going to get something what you are going to save it on this one. When you do an automation, you save a lot of time. You save a lot of time where the analyst is working on top of each and every small false positive incidents, which is a well known incidents in the market or might be you have already been aware about it. It might be a different signature of the same behavior. So the analyst who you are spending by per hour or you are paying per hour. So he will you will be saving a lot of time from there on working on each incidents. You will be looking at the full time equivalence grains that what you gain from it. So you will be understanding about how many dollars that you save from an incident once you have an automation platform to handle it. So basically an understanding about this was this session was basically to understand about how uh, what exactly an incident will be on a ransomware how it looks what is the level of attack vectors that you will be seeing across what is the mode of reporting and uh, how actually we can automate this 
and other marketing market solutions there are a lot of uh, community version automation solutions available in the market uh, there are a lot of vendor specific solutions there are a lot of uh, scripts which can automate the things it's all uh, the work on the team and collaboration on how you can integrate it and most of the solutions that you have you can integrate it as well if they have a public api release available so uh, as a complete overview we would like to uh, call off the session right away so uh, for example of uh, some of the automation tools which i can say that phantom is a phantom phantom is an a solution it's a community version free version of uh, uh, automation tool um, there are uh, solution like swimline cyber spawns simplify a lot of solutions are available in the market which is uh, secure sock or automation solutions uh, right now we I we are, I hope like we are open to a QA sessions if you guys have any concerns please comment on it like you can uh, yes the session will be recorded and uh, you will be you will be able to see from tomorrow on the website itself from the infosec train website so this session we would like to uh, clear clarify any questions of, uh... Can you share a few examples of playbooks? Pardon? Companies that offer or any open source playbooks. Okay. You can, uh, there are, the, if you, because let's say what is actually a community releases. There are sol vendors which build a solution. Basically, they give a community edition where you can download the solutions and you can start building it. And once you build it, since it is a community version, you start sharing across your building things. So if you go to Phantom as a community version of security orchestration solution, there you will be able to find out a lot of playbooks, more than hundreds of playbooks of different type of attacks in the market. It will show you exactly about what solution you want to integrate, where exactly you want to integrate, and how to handle it. It will be well defined in those playbooks. An example for it is, I can tell, straightforward it's like phantom is a product which is a community edition we'd have yes it have a vendor edition as well but in the same time it's there is a community edition where you can download and you can install up to 100 offenses which is having multiple events even your you can if you guys have a sock team or a which is you guys have a sim solution you can start deploying it as a virtual machine and uh, start pulling over the integrate with your sim solution and pulling up your locks from there or as, as an in offense so from your sim solution definitely you will build the offense by correlating all your all your lock sources and you will make a meaningful offense so this offense can be pulled on to that sock orchestration solution and from there you can handle it across and the playbooks is available as well any other questions Prashant, you are also available. Prabha? Yes, sir. My question is for uh, Prashant. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. yeah, Prashant, uh, uh, my question is to you, like you said, uh, uh, once the machine is infected with ransomware, you should, should not shut down it. Uh, what about the network disconnection? Yeah, the network disconnection you have to do, you have to isolate it from your internal network. Okay. And uh, why I am telling you not to shut down, so that if you will shut down it, you will not able to get to know the whole process of the malware. Mm -hmm. Like how uh, it is okay. Yep. okay. And uh, the thing like if it is trying to getting trying to connect to CNC and all, already you isolated it from the network, so it will be not able to communicate to CNC. Right. So at least you will oh, save yeah. that thing also and you will be able to get all the forensic logs proper forensic logs to do the investigation and uh, taking the further remediation actions okay i got it uh, what about the domain that you said okay oh, pardon it is, uh, it is on the uh, infected 
PC or any other PC which is connected to the uh, network? Uh, no, for the infected PC. But infected PC, if it is uh, infected with ransomware, you can't do can't do anything. Um, like it is uh, blank to you. Like you cannot do anything. So how you log into the domain admin with this in this PC? Uh, no, I'm telling the time when it the incident got detected on that system. Once the incident will get detected, that means malicious code landed on that system. It infected the system. Mm -hmm. So once it will uh, means for encryption for encrypting the system, it it takes some time. Once it will communicate to CNC and then it will execute the code and then it will get encrypted. But once any malicious code or any abnormal activity you will identify on that using different logs from Windows and uh, uh, SIM tool, you will get to know the system mm -hmm. got infected. So the first step what you will take is to disconnect it from the network. So that even okay. if the CNC is not getting blocked by our proxy or anything, it's not getting detected as malicious, at least that system will not able to communicate to that CNC because we already disconnected and isolated it from our internal network. Okay, so once you disconnect the uh, machine from the network, so there is no chance of uh, using the domain admin uh, on this PC because it's already disconnected from the network. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, where, whenever you are going and trying to access anything, like uh, suppose mm -hmm. you want to access uh, any file or any shared folder. Uh, so it will, uh, okay. once you to isolate it from the system, that shared folder will be not available for you. But in any worst okay. case situation, uh, any, in any case, you would, it means wherever any login or anything required, never use your uh, domain credentials or admin credentials basically what uh, added points which we can use it is on this particular incident handling method is that when we say about this is not actually like say a firewall guys activity or something this will be like say a sock team or a blue team which is handling this particular incidents so whenever you see the signatures across in the network what your actions is like First thing that is okay once you get a signature definitely the malware's first activity is to maintain a persistence in the machine so either the malware will be inside or he might have transferred his uh, other components to it so how exactly like how exactly uh, you would yeah, you cannot be aware and you cannot be sure that your other machines have been infected or not so till your investigation closes till that incident closes you should be taking a precaution step in order to avoid using such credentials across the network because might be there will be network sniffing finally might be taking from their uh, uh, volatile memory the loaded information which is a map drive and all these things then we can able to find pull out the admin credentials from there even if you guys tried uh, uh, exploiting a eternal blue vulnerability you can use uh, tools like mimic cards and all these things to find pull out the credentials which is saved in the memory so you don't want to give a chance so that in case of a domain admin compromise it's a compromise for the whole network so it's a best practice exactly. so to avoid such things when you see such an incident like setting an awareness to all your operations teams say that like our oh, mr uh -huh. operations team please pardon but for the time being since we have an incident we request not to go into this level because we don't we don't want to take a chance of getting a domain admin compromise so this will be yes. the focus of how an incident okay. will be handled in this phase okay it's clear yeah. thank you very much Rafiq, one more thing i think prashant forgot to mention here is if you don't disconnect the infected machine from network you won't be able to stop penetration of the particular ransomware or the infection which is actually happened to one of the machine i hope i am right prashant Uh, yeah, what you are telling like uh, the same thing like if you will isolate the system That isolation like you can shut down the network port uh, or you can uh, contain uh, you can you can put that system into the contain VLAN and uh, As you said like it will stop penetrating inside the organization So this thing can be achieved by isolating the system Yes but I think uh, 
Uh, this would also be a infect. Uh, this would also be a effective solution to actually stop penetration of that particular infection. I don't know whether I'm right or not, but I think this this should also be done. Yes, you are right. Uh, yes, actually, this is uh, one of the. Uh, yes, you are right. Uh, we can actually look into that as well. Yes, that is also one of the focus. And uh, yes, okay. Okay, now I uh, uh, moving to a question that Mr. Gaurav and uh, Mr. Amit are asking is regarding the certain. Okay, so when you say about getting the security advisories from the cert in or uh, service from a certain regarding uh, because certain represents the computer emergency response team for India, right? So it will be for an incident response. Yes, so these organizations are the ones which releases when you have an incident they will releases your advisories about what exactly you have to do which all iocs you need to block which all uh, ips or the uh, remote host which is trying to connect which are the file types which are the signatures and followed by this will be shared across with the organizations through threat intelligence platforms also right but how the picture of certain is not coming into these levels because this is the way how you can handle it internally without getting into our external like say as we said that we don't want to get as a security team as an IT team there is no point like why are we not able to do it when someone else is able to do it so maybe yes they will have an add-on security feature they will have add-on technologies tools yes but if we are able to do it and understand it from our side if our process is in well-known process we have a particular procedure to follow then we can be achieved without even getting in certain and all engagements or am i right to the question or is there any 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 confusions mr amit and gaurav are we good are we good to go or uh, any other questions we would like to respond uh, hi this is ravinder okay hi uh see I, I was not able to attend this because of some office work so can you please uh, let me know if the recording is available for the sure sure email? sure yeah you will get an email regarding the links with uh, uh the recorded recordings uh it will be it will be on the website itself it will be on the website okay thank you and uh, for the information we are will have we will be having an upcoming SOC webinar and we will be doing exclusively webinar for SOC itself. So a complete architecture to build an effective SOC will be soon. And it depends on the feedbacks and requirements of the participants from today. So uh, your comments and feedbacks are well appreciated. You can drop an email to info at as infosectrain.com for regarding this. Yeah, one thing I would like to mention, it was an excellent uh, uh, webinar. So I would sincerely appreciate Rob for organizing it and Suraj and Prashant for giving an excellent presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much and uh, just we would be very happy to hear that and in the same time unfortunately this is not a practical session so the, I, I hope there will be people which have confusion about uh, practical and because that domain is different like there is no point in playing with uh, creation and deletion and all these things we need to as a security managers or the team working in IT domains you should be well aware about how to handle a situation so it will be basically a situational awareness so moreover like if you have more comments or more requirements regarding managing of a SOC and how it can be enhanced properly and uh, more technology requirements let us know uh, we will be happy to assist you with more and more webinars regarding this Thank you so much. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, you're audible. Yes, uh, I'm Esther from Tanzania. I would like to thank you very much for the session. I'm so interested with it. And also, thanks, Mr. Pranav, because he's the one who encouraged me to find out on EvoSec training. And most of my questions I've been asked and I've got the 
the answers of my question. Thank you very much for your session. Please kindly invite us for the, any other session that is coming. Sure. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. So it was a very pleasure from team InfoSec and uh, looking yes. forward with more and more uh, in participations from your side and uh, thank you so much thank you too thank you prashant for joining for this session thank you 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 th